This must be the easiest way to create AI agents yet. I just built an AI agent without writing any code. Heck, I didn't even have to add any nodes onto a canvas either. The entire process simply involves selecting an AI model, giving it some instructions, assigning a knowledge base, and adding any tools that you want. And bam, you instantly have an AI agent that you can interact with within the Flowwise interface, or you could embed it into any website or access it from anywhere using a public URL. Historically, what you would do is add a tool agent node to the canvas. You would then assign a memory node so that it can keep track of your conversation history. You would then assign a chat model, like OpenAI in this case, and then you'll start to attach different tools. Or we could also add a custom knowledge base to our agent as well using the retriever tool. But as I mentioned, we'll create this agent without writing any code and without adding these nodes onto a canvas. In Flowwise, simply go to Assistance and then click on Custom Assistant. Then let's create a new assistant by clicking Add. Let's give it a name. I'll simply call mine My Assistant. First, we need to select our chat model. From the model dropdown, you'll find integration with several service providers. For this video, I'll simply use Chat Open AI. And now we can enter our system prompt and I'll simply leave it on You are a helpful assistant for now. Then we can add a custom knowledge base, which we will add in a few minutes. But the next thing I recommend we do is select our OpenAI credentials. If you haven't created credentials yet, simply click on Create New, give your credential a name, and then generate your OpenAI API key. If you're not sure how to do that, I will leave a link in the description of this video, and you can click on the card on the screen right now. Now we can select our model. I'll simply leave it on GPT-40 Mini. Here we can also change the temperature, and we can enable streaming for our responses. Optionally, we can set advanced things like max tokens, timeouts, and a whole bunch of other parameters. Scrolling down, we can also enable image uploads, which I'm actually going to do. If we are using a multimodal model like GPT-40, we can pass messages into the chat and then ask the model questions about that image. If you enabled image uploads, you can select the image resolution as well. I'll simply leave this on low. This will simply use less tokens and be a bit more affordable. Interestingly, you can also use reasoning models and then select the reasoning effort. For example, if we go to our model selection, we could change this to something like O3 Mini, which is a reasoning model. We can then set the reasoning effort for that model from low, medium, or high. Low will be quicker, consume less tokens, but be less accurate. And with high, it will spend a lot more time reasoning and of course consume more tokens and be a bit slower. But for this demo, I'll simply go with GPT-40 Mini. Lastly, we can add tools to this agent as well. But before we do that, let's save our assistant. And if we scroll back up, we now have this preview window which we can use to interact with our agent. I'll start by sending hello. And if you get a response back, it means everything was set up correctly. You will also notice in the chat window that we can upload images. So I'll simply select this image of this surprised looking woman and let's ask, describe the image. And it's saying the image features a young woman with long wavy brown hair. She has wide eyes and an open mouth, expressing a look of surprise or shock. And the background is transparent, focusing attention on her facial expression. Great. I do want to mention that we can also enable file uploads in the chat as well. So we can do that by going to settings, configuration. We can then go to the file upload tab and enable full file uploads. Let's save this, let's close this pop-up, and now we can see that we are indeed able to attach files as well. I'm simply going to upload the sample invoice, and just to show you what this looks like, this is an invoice that I downloaded online, and this seems to be for some internet bill, but the value that I'm interested in is this gross amount, including VAT, of 553 euros. So let's ask a question like, what is the invoice amount, including VAT? Let's send this, and indeed, we get the correct response back. So far, this is very cool, but we've effectively only created a normal chatbot, not an AI agent. Agents have the ability to call tools and interact with their environment. So let's say we wanted to add a few tools to this agent. First, we want the agent to have the ability to go online and perform a Google search. This way, it's got access to real-time data 
and can perform research on our behalf. For the second tool, we'll give the agent access to a custom knowledge base, which we can maintain. Let's start by giving it web access. For that, simply scroll down to Tools and click on Add Tool. From the drop-down, we can see a wide range of available tools. For instance, if our agent is terrible at doing math, we could simply add the calculator tool. Let's add another tool. I don't want to point out a few important tools, like the chat flow tool, which allows our agent to call other chat flows. We can also call Composio, which is a service that offers integration with over 250 apps like Gmail, Google Calendar, etc. With custom tools, we can build our very own tools using JavaScript. But what we're interested in is the Tavoli API tool. This allows our agent to perform a Google search. What we have to do for this tool is to connect its credentials. So click on the drop down, then click on create new, give your credential a name. I'll simply call this YouTube demo. And now for the API key, go to tavoli.com, then sign up for your account. After signing in, look for this API key section and create a new API key. Just give it a name, like YouTube demo, click on create, then simply copy your API key and add it to Flowwise. Then click on add. Let's test this by saving this assistant. Then let's go back up to the preview window and let's ask a recent question like, what is the latest news on GPT 4.5? And this is giving us this nice summary of all the latest news related to GPT 4.5. And importantly, we're also getting these citations, which are the links to the original articles. Now, before we move on to adding a custom knowledge base, I do want to share a few more tips and tricks. Under instructions, you can enter the system message for this agent. But if you don't want to write it yourself, you can get the AI model to generate it for you. So if you click on generate, you can simply describe your agent over here or select one of these templates. I'm going to describe my agent as a friendly AI assistant called James. The agent should give short and precise answers and James has access to a web search tool. Let's generate this. And Flowwise now used a large language model to generate the system prompt for us along with examples and different notes and rules. Cool. One more thing is that the agent actually doesn't know what the current date and time is. To demonstrate this, let's say, what is the current date? And the model seems to think it's the 5th of October, 2023, which is not correct. And this can become a problem for any actions that require the current date and time. So one way to solve this is of course to add the current date and time to the system prompt. But, but of course, this isn't something that you want to update daily. So what we can do instead is add a tool to this agent, which it can use to obtain the current date and time. Now, looking at the list of tools over here, there's actually no tool available for retrieving the current date and time. And this is where a custom tool comes in. What we can do is go to tools and we can create our very own tools, but this will involve writing JavaScript code. And I promised you we will not be writing code in this video. Instead, what we can do is go to marketplace. Then let's change the type to tools. And from this list, you will find pre-created tools. What we want is this get current date time tool. And we don't have to change anything here. We can just click on use template. Because I already have this tool, I'm just going to rename this to today's date time tutorial. You can just leave it the same and click on add. Now, if we go back to tools, we will see that newly created tool in this list. And if we wanted to make any changes to this tool, we can simply click on it and perhaps change things like the time zone. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll simply leave the time zone on Australia slash Sydney. Let's save this. Let's go back to our assistant, custom assistant, my assistant. And now if we go back to add tools, so let's click on add tool, then let's select custom tool. And now from the list of tools, you can see the tool that we just created. So let's save this. And now let's ask the agent, what is the current date? And this time it is giving the correct date. Fantastic. Now let's move on to creating our custom knowledge base. And this is where Flowwise absolutely shines. Let's go to document stores. A document store is effectively a knowledge base and each knowledge base can have multiple data sources. So these could be different files. You could be scraping websites, etc. We can create a new document store by clicking on add new. Let's give it a name. I'll just call mine something like agent knowledge base. Let's click on add. 
click on agent knowledge base and now we can start to add document loaders and flowwise supports a large list of document loaders or data sources for our example i'm actually going to add a csv file so i'm going to upload this menu csv file and just to show you what that looks like the csv file simply contains a list of menu items along with their prices now that i've selected the file i'm simply going to click on preview chunks and this is simply grabbing each of the menu items individually and creating chunks from them let's click on process and of course we can continue adding additional files as well but for now i'm going to add this document to my knowledge base let's go to more actions let's click on upset all chunks and from here let's select an embedding model for this i will be using openai embeddings so i'll select my openai credentials which we created earlier for the model name i'm going to select text embedding three small and we can leave the rest of these fields on the default values now these documents need to be inserted into a database which is also called a vector store so let's click on vector store and here we have a range of many different types of stores I will be using Pinecone. So again, we have to connect our Pinecone credentials. And if you haven't done this before, you can create your Pinecone database for free by going to pinecone.io, then sign up for an account. Then from your dashboard, click on create index, give your index a name. I'll call mine Flowwise Tutorial. Now under configuration, we need to use the same embedding model that we used within Flowwise. As a reminder, we use text embedding three small. So in our database, let's also search for text embedding three small. We don't have to change anything else. Let's simply click on create index and this will create our vector store for us. Let's simply copy this name and then add that in Flowwise under Pinecone index. Also under credentials, let's click on this drop down. Let's create a new credential and let's call this Pinecone API. And then for the API key, let's go back to Pinecone. Let's click on API keys. Then click on create API key. Give it a name like Flowwise Tutorial and create your key. Then copy your key and add it to Flowwise and click on add. What we can do is also add a record manager. And this is super easy. Simply click on SQLite and under cleanup, select full. And that's all you have to do. We can now upsert the data from our document store into our database by clicking upsert. And this will tell us that 20 documents were added to the database. Remember, it's each of these menu items along with their price. And if we go back to Pinecone, we can go to database, we can click on Flowwise tutorial, and in the database, we can see that 20 records were added. And for each of these documents, we can see the text from the CSV document. Now, keep in mind, if we did not add a record manager, and we clicked on upsert, all the documents would be duplicated in the database. But because we have a record manager, it will first check if the documents already exist in the database. And because they do, it's skipping 20 documents. But what we can also do is go back and add another document. So I'm going to add a docx loader and I'll upload a Word document. And I'm simply going to upload this Q&A document related to a fictitious restaurant called the Oaken Barrel. What we can do now is add a text splitter just to chunk that document into smaller pieces. I'll set the chunk size to 2000 with a chunk overlap of 200. Let's preview. And here we can see this will give us three chunks. Let's click on process. And if we refresh this, we can see this document was now prepared. So the next step is to upsert this document into the database as well. So we can simply go to upsert all chunks. Then let's click on upsert. And now you can see that only three documents were added and 20 documents were skipped. Awesome. Now let's go back. And just to be clear, you can also delete documents at any time from your database by simply going to options and deleting the document. Right, now that we've got our knowledge base, let's simply go back to assistance. Let's click on custom assistant my assistant and now to attach this knowledge base to our agent we can simply click on the knowledge drop down let's select our document store and by the way if you don't see your document store in this list it means you haven't executed the upsert process yet so be sure to do that as well now for the knowledge base we have to provide this description this description will tell the agent when to use this knowledge base over the other tools you can manually enter this 
or you can simply click on generate and Flowwise will populate this description for you. And it's correctly determined that the information in this knowledge base is related to the Oaken Battle restaurant. How cool is that? Now that we've attached our knowledge base, let's ask a question like, how much is a stake at Oaken Barrel? All right, so it's saying it couldn't find the answer. And what I suspect happened is we need to save the assistant first. And let's try this again. So let's ask it, how much is a stake at Oaken Barrel? And this time we do get the correct results back along with the sources of this information. Now that we have a fully functional assistant, we can access it in many different ways. We can attach it to any website using this little code snippet, or we can call it from external applications using this URL along with these parameters, or we can publicly share this chatbot by enabling make public, and now you can access your chatbot from this URL. How cool is that? If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more Flowwise content, and also check out my full Flowwise masterclass over here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.